Hello everyone, this is Bashar Massad from MKN Group. Um, this video clip is about uh, Signway UC200-15 IP PPX. This is like an amazing um, PPX. As you see, it has 15 concurrent calls, 60 registered users or extensions. Um, it has by default four PSTN lines, I mean the FXO and two FXS. What's more amazing, which is for now exclusive to the MKN firmware for this uh, PBX, is the auto discover and auto uh, auto provisioning um, feature. So what I did today is I'll show you um, I connected four different phones HTEC, Fanville, Grandstream and a e link to yeah, so here's the e link I've connected them to the same network I'll, I'll show you more details about the connection because this is an important uh, step okay here so initially this is what I did uh, I connected the LAN with an L port of the uh, sine wave PBX to um, the network to our network not to the network that has the phones because I want to isolate them into two different net not isolate completely but just to put them in two different subnets. So this LAN is connected to the same network where this computer is. And that will give me um, the initial access to the PPX. Now you see that uh, by default uh, the LAN port comes static IP 192.168.0.101. And of course we go and then the username is admin and the password is admin please change it later uh, don't keep it as is okay so now if I go to system and I go to network settings um, here what I'm going to do I'm going to change this uh, mode from dual to route and I'm going to keep the one on DHCP. If you receive your PBX different, just change it to DHCP. And I'm going to enable the LAN port to give to be a DHCP server in order to give IP addresses to the phones. So this is going to be 192.168.0.101. One nine two one six eight dot zero dot one twenty. Assuming I will not need more and uh, enabled. Okay, perfect. IP address. So I believe that's what we need for now. Um, and then I'm going to hit save, and then this PPX will restart. What, what's going to happen after I restart the PPX is I'm going to connect it in a different way because now I'm sure that uh, one port is connected uh, is, has a, is connected to my network where this computer is. So the one port, which is this one, is connected all the way to my computer. The LAN port... I'm connecting it to a D-Link switch here, PoE switch, and I'm connecting the four phones to the same LAN. So all the phones will be in, uh, ha will have an IP address 192.168.0, 105, 106, and uh, I let it like, you know, and actually the most important thing here is to access the PPX, because after that, um, this is the nice feature we're talking about everything will be um, the auto discover and the auto provisioning will be through the ppx so i'm going to pause this recording to go switch the cables on the uh, on the uc200 
Okay, so I have switched the cables again. And this one going to from one to the network of the whole office and from LAN to another switch where the phones are connected. So now I should be able, I found out the IP address of, on the one side using the uh, advanced IP scanner and it was 192.168.2.216. And I'm going to log in as admin admin. Perfect. So and if you want to go back and just have a look at the network settings, you're gonna see that the network settings are exactly how we live them. Now Usually I don't like using setup wizards. I like him to do everything from scratch. But this time let's use the setup wizard because it guides you to the most important things that you need to do. And the first thing is choose your correct time zone. We're in Eastern time zone. Either you use an NTP server or just modify the date and time um, to the correct one that you have. It's 9.20 in the morning now, so I can just say 09.20, that's it, uh, and next, a password, need to change the password, so I'm going to put admin1234, just to change that one, admin1234, and then I'm going to go next. Network settings, we don't need to do anything except if you remember this one goes to back to the door when you go the when you do the uh, wizard thing. So I'll put it back to router and just want to check that everything is fine. Yes, it is. And then we continue next and extensions i'm gonna just put it 20 that's the range of your extensions to 50 and i'm gonna add the extensions now because we're already here so i will start by extension 20 and let's create five extensions for now and let the system give them random passwords actually it doesn't matter because we're going to do the auto provisioning so we hit next now we go to trunks add a trunk trunk name okay and we have our own voip service uh, which is uh, it's voip time and uh, we have really very good plans i um, suggest that you guys go to our website www.itsvoiptime.com and just quickly One of the nice plans that we have is this one, uh, which is 45 US dollars, and you get 10 channels and unlimited calls to USA and Canada. And this is real, and one free number. I have many customers on this plan for years now. Anyhow, let's go back here to the username is and the same thing let me make sure that there is no space here okay and paste and then the password and then the trunk domain which is void dot it's v o i p time dot com okay let me hit next and now everything's supposed to be done so we hit finish and okay uh, now it needs to restart we'll say okay and we wait for it to come back online okay so it's back right now so let's go and hit advance and log in remember we changed the password user is still admin Password admin1234, login, and here we go. We're back. 
Now let's check a few things. I just want to make sure. Status always gives you like um, uh, the PBX status. You see like the extensions and of course this, these are the ones we created. These are by default and these are the FXS ones which is also by default on the PPX. I'm going to remove these in a second and let's see trunk uh, status. It says fail to register and I think I know why. Let's go to uh, the PPX trunks and one of the options we need to change is where are we connected. So here it says external LAN, but we are connected through the WAN. So if I change it to external WAN, uh, save. Okay, um, we go back to status, PBX, PBX monitor. And trunk, it says fail to register again. Um, let me check why. Trunk, trunk. Maybe I just typed something wrong. Uh, let me double check again. So, fail to register. This is the username, the password. And, okay, let me just freeze this and save. And go back to status. Okay, I will get to the um, trunk uh, failing to register later. It could be like a uh, wrong password or something. I'll get back to it, not a big deal. Uh, now, the most important part is the auto discover auto provisioning. So we go to PPX, then we go to auto provisioning and open it. As you see, nothing here. One click on device search and we'll wait a little bit and it's gonna find the four different phones with four different manufacturers here all right perfect so actually it did find the phones not on that network it was searching the WAN port so what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete these and ask it to go search the LAN port. I, I go to config and I say, okay, go to search the LAN. Save. Oh, it needs a restart. Fine. It was actually a quick start, software start, and now it's after we change the config to search the LAN, uh, let's do the device search now. <laughs> All right, so. Here are the four phones connected. Grandstream, Fanvale, Yealink, and EdgeTick. It found them all. And the only thing I need to do is go and assign extensions uh, or find the model number 2130, this one. And uh, boom, gives me the configuration of the uh, 2130, I'll say line one is going to take extension 20, and I can do like more. Well, 2130 is as a basic phone, so it's like there's almost nothing else. Save, and now it's going to send to extension 20, Fanville phone. And I'm going to make it extension 21, and the model number 
uh, is an X5S. Here we go. Now the, the Fanville X5S has uh, BLF keys, DSS. So here, if you go here, see you can configure all of these directly from here. So key one, um, BLF uh, attended transfer, and it's going to be uh, for extension 20. And you can put a name. All right, so you can do these, and that will automatically be downloaded or provisioned to the phone. And okay, so the HTEC phone, same thing. We have the the HTEC 926E. Line one will be extension 22, and here are also the keys. I can make it BLF call park. And value, let's make it 420 just for testing. And yes. And the last one is the E Link. Very basic phone, this one. So actually, zip G. I think the one connected is 46S. No, the one connected is 23P, I think. Yeah, so this is gonna be 23, of course, like no keys. And we're gonna hit save. Okay. And all phones supposed to be provisioned. Now, if I go to the status and I go to the PPX status monitor and look at the extensions, we see that, oh, still unregistered. It may take uh, some, oh, yeah, because it's provisioning the phone. I see the phone's restarting on that side. So maybe it's going to take, yeah, it's going to take some time until these are registered, the ones that we have created. Oh, here you go, the first one registered, the one, the extension 22. And these will come slowly after that, after the... Provisioning is completed. Let's wait to see at least another one. See the fan and the phone is coming up. Come on. Okay, I'm not going to waste time waiting. We'll come back to it. Um, if I go back to the PPX uh, and the auto provisioning, just want to show you that there's also a template that you can create. So you can create a template that will, let's say, um, first you choose the model. As you see, like you know, there's also the scene form, which is not very popular here in North America. Let's say a Fanville. And the model I want to create the template for is an X5, and I'm going to call it Fanville X5. And then I can create the template. I just want to put, let's say, here, line, save, just a simple thing. And now when I go back to devices, I can assign, uh, where is that, here, I can assign a template to that phone. Uh, did we create it to X5S? Doesn't look like we did it for X5S. Let me go back and see. Template, uh, yeah, X5S should be. Uh, X5S, here you go, save, save, and hit, okay, so when we go back and go to the Fanville phone, instead of programming these things here, we can just choose the template, okay, I'm not going to choose it right now, so that's very helpful when you have many phones share the same configuration. Um, 
Okay, so let me go back to the extensions and see the status after we did the auto provisioning. Oh, not this one. Uh, PPX monitor, and then we go to extensions. I still see them unregistered. Uh, let me go check what's going on. Okay, so after we give it some time for the phones to start, actually, one of them restarted twice. Now we see all the four phones are registered. Uh, these are the phones connected 2021, 20, 22, and 23. Okay, so now we're going to go back and uh, do two main things that uh, we need for this thing to work. The first thing is the inbound rules and the outbound rules. The second thing. Okay, so let's go here. And um, of course, like, you know, there will be part two of this um, uh, video that we will talk more in details about IVRs, ring groups, and all that, all the other features available here. But let's go now to call control and inbound routes. Inbound routes, we decide where we want to send the call. There is by default one rule, and that rule just straightforward uh, um, by default it comes with uh, four uh, FXO um, ports here but what we can do we can add this per this uh, trunk and remove these uh, well anyway if we keep them because they're not connected um, oh, okay so now you can see that um, where is the one? You can add a time condition. You can have a mobility extension. The most important part is the destination. And there is no DID pattern. There is no caller ID pattern. That means anything that hits the PPX through any of these trunks, regardless who's the caller, regardless anything, regardless what number was called because on the same sub trunk as you know you may have more than one number i just want this to go to extension 20. that's it as simple as this and hit save and as i said when we go to uh, part two we're gonna go and like you know in more details about different options of ivrs and adding time conditions and all that stuff so that's that will make it work all the calls coming through the sip trunk will go to extension 20. now the other important thing is the outbound uh, routes uh, so here there's also a default one one of the things that i don't like about the other ppx's in the market uh, or at least the ones i know of they come with no default inbound, no default outbound. So you have to go and create one. Otherwise, you start um, making outgoing calls and nothing goes through. Anyway, so the default one, it has pattern of anything. So if you try to call any number, and here, like, you know, um, you know it's, it, it means anything you dial, uh, any digit, any type of digit um, and here you have the uh, members of that of this rule so now these are not members so we just add them all here so now they're member of these uh, routes uh, this route and they can call using this one now the trunks here the MKN is not there, so we move it now. It's selected. Um, I'll talk about zip codes later in part two. Uh, and there is no password. That's it. I mean, just enable it and don't use any time condition. Just say, you know, we don't have any time condition specified anyway. So uh, that's it. Actually, this means that um, this call is gonna go like through these trunks 
But you know what? Now I don't want to keep these here because keeping it here, um, keeping this here may create a problem because there's nothing connected to these uh, FXO lines. So I'm going to remove them and keep just the zip trunk. Um, I w I, if I hit plus to add another rule, I can like, you know, add uh, like, you know, whatever pattern I want for outbound uh, rules. Like for example, um, if somebody calls uh, a certain number, actually I have to create it in a different uh, Rule. Let's say I want 911 always to go through an FXO, for example. But I'll leave it like this for now. And as I said, in part two, we'll go in more details. So now, actually, we do have a functioning PPX that can call in, call out. Extensions are registered. Phone are registered. Um, so this is like the basic configuration of this uh, PPX. Um, stay tuned for part two that will be coming soon. Thank you. Again, this is Bashar Massad from MKN Group.